Good morning, everybody. My name is Stefano Maggiolino, and I'm the responsible at Tenova for the DRI technology. There have been many changes in these recent years, and most of them are permanent. One of them is definitely the direction this, our steel industry is taking towards sustainability. Definitely, it is a trip with no return. All the stakeholders are demanding this change and um, we're moving to that direction. As in any trip, the most important thing is to choose the right partner. Energiron is the innovative HOL direct reduction technology jointly developed by Tenova and Danieli. At Energiron, we're proud that we have the most advanced technology and we are achieving the benchmark solution for sustainability. We have in our technology some unique features that really make Energiron the preferred DRI technology towards sustainability. This feature match exactly what steelmakers most value in terms of going to green iron production. Let's see what are the main areas that differentiate us in the market. The first one is removal of CO2. We're proudly the only technology in iron making and steam making that have proven CO2 absorption unit in our uh, process, in our plant. In this way, we have intrinsic capabilities for CCU, FOCCS. The other unique feature is the DRI quality. Our DRI quality has proven capacity of reaching uh, very high metallization to 96% metallization, but with excellent carbon content in terms of cementite, up to 5%. This allows us to produce any type of product from cold DRI, HBI, hot DRI through a dielectric air furnace, and pig iron. Last but not least is our total flexibility for use different makeup gas. We can use the same plant, the same equipment, and transition from natural gas to any other gases like reformed gas, syngas, coke oven gas, and even hydrogen. Again, using the same scheme without changing anything and transitioning back and forth from different gases. This flexibility is definitely something that our industry values a lot. Let's speak in more details of these three characteristics, starting from the selective removal of CO2. If we see the plant as a carbon balance, we see that we are putting in the plant through the makeup gas and to the fuel gas around 150 kilos of carbon per ton of DRI. For the balance, these 150 kilos must exit. 40 of them go out together with the DRI in form of cementite. 45 kilos of carbon are removed in the, of gases, but the most important thing is that 65 kilos of carbon per ton of DRI are removed with selective removal of CO2. The CO2 has a very good quality and actually are used uh, as a, a valuable byproduct. If we see the same balance in terms of uh, CO2 uh, re removal, not carbon, we can say that 62% of the overall CO2 emission are selectively removed. We're talking about 260 kilos of CO2 per ton of DRI. And here you can see how many of our customers, they transform what typically is a headache for a, our industry, that is CO2 production, into a source of revenues. Uh, you can see that Ternium is using CO2, uh, is selling it to the food and beverages industries, or for example, Emirates Steel, they are selling it to the oil industry for enhanced oil recovery. And we're talking about very important revenues. If you calculate 250 kilos of CO2 per ton of DRI 
Emirates Steel has a, a install capacity of 4 million tons per year of DRI. And there is an, we can assume a, a value of 30 euros per ton of CO2. We're talking of tens of millions of dollars of uh, revenues by the sale of CO2. And again, we are very proud that we can reduce in this way CO2 while guaranteeing high quality DRI. We now move to uh, the fact that our capability to produce high carbon DRI and uh, high temperature DRI. We have uh, decades in producing different uh, qualities of, of DRI with carbon content ranging to low, lower than 2% for special application up to 4.5% when the DRI is used to replace Pigaro. Um, we have this total flexibility to set the requested carbon content in the DRI with benefits that we see in the end user, that is the electric car furnace. Um, so we can complete with this DRI, uh, high carbon DRI, the perfect uh, uh, reduction of the remaining FEO. We have an additional source of energy by putting carbon in, in the furnace. And above all, we have the perfect foamy slag um, and, and the perfect process in, in, in the furnace achieving longer electrode lives, longer refractory life, and uh, um, higher productivity by reducing the tap to tap. If we combine high carbon DRI with hot uh, transport, we have additional benefits. We've been the first plan, the first technology in uh, uh, using transport of hot DRI, and we save 100, uh, and we save for each 100 degrees of uh, uh, temperature in the DRI, we save at least 26 kilowatt hours per ton of liquid steel, increasing the productivity by 5%. The transport of the hot DRI is done through a system that we call high temp, which is basically a pneumatic trans transport system. We have a force reference installation of the system and the first one being in operation since 1998. The system is very beautiful uh, in terms of simplicity, in terms of reliability, in terms of safety. It's a completely sealed uh, system, so there is no fugitive dust, no fugitive gas. We minimize the temperature losses and we enhance the utmost flexibility in the operation of the electric car furnace. Everything in a fully automated and integrated system uh, between the DRI plant and the uh, mail shop. But the, the novelty uh, that we are proposing in the market is peak iron production through direct reduction. The concept is easy. Being capable of uh, producing high carbon DRI up to 4.5% carbon, we just need to split the hot DRI from the metal from the gang. And we can do that in a reducing furnace um, with what we call a um, open leg bed furnace, which is a technology supplied by, by Tenova. With this system, we basically combine a plant that produces um, DRI carbon above, um, with carbon content above 4%. And then we produce hot metal that can be tapped in uh, um, torpedoes as they actually do now. We basically replace the, the, the blast furnace operation, maintaining all the downstream facilities and operation with the BOF uh, uh, and and downstream exactly as it is now. We have additional um, advantages. First is that with the system, we, we can use blast furnace grade pellet instead of more expensive uh, DRI grade pellet. And then we can also maintain the slag um, exactly with the same composition as it is uh, in a blast furnace, so maintaining a, um, 
a side business uh, as done in integrated mills. Um, everything with a cut of CO2 emission of at least 50%. The reduction, the reducing furnace is basically a, a smelter furnace operated in a brush arc mode. So a very standard um, um, st static electric furnace operating with Soderberg electrodes. Um, this is, for example, a, a, a reference of a similar furnace used for uh, federal laws. Um, so it's a very proven solution that works even in tougher conditions than uh, used with the DRI. And again, we the hot metal that is produced is totally compatible with the one um, currently produced with the blast furnace as well as the, um, the slag. And the campaigns of the, these furnaces are extremely long in terms of uh, years, because the, the, the arc of, uh, the, of this electric furnace is extremely short. And because of this reason, we can install it also in regions where the power grid is not so uh, strong and stable. And also in terms of layout, the, the layout is very compact, flexible, and again, we can uh, tap hot metal in the existing torpedoes. So basically we are reinventing iron making. We produce the same hot metal on a blast furnace with the same composition of steel, same composition of slag, but cutting emission by 50%, at least. Now we move to the third uh, topic, which is the flexibility of uh, um, makeup gas. And we will talk about hydrogen use. Hydrogen can come from uh, um, electrolysis, so with totally green uh, uh, footprint, and can be used exactly in the same plant that uh, can start with the natural gas. In this rendering, we envisage, let me say, the future uh, steel making plant, but this is not a dream because we are currently doing these projects. And most of all, we have the experience. Just imagine that in plant with the uh, reformer uh, in our scheme, we already have 70% of hydrogen. So moving from 70% to 100% for us is not a, a big change. Uh, Additionally, we have the perfect scheme for the use of hydrogen by using a process gas heater. In the 90s, we have done campaigns with use of up to 90% of hydrogen, and then we have extensive experience with the uh, process gas heater and sealing gas valves that are necessary for the use of hydrogen. One may wonder that uh, hydrogen being uh, endothermic in the uh, reduction reaction may not be such a good re reductant. Actually, is the opposite. The fact that hydrogen has the best kinetics in terms of reducibility, we have uh, a, a very good uh, reduction process. In this slide, we can see the um, pilot plant where we did the test in the 90s and Thanks to this test, we are nowadays able to design a plant uh, with the, um, the right process parameters, ensuring that the ERI quality and with the right uh, design of, of the plant, particularly of the reactor. And as we, I was saying before, we have as a standard in our plant some mechanical sealing valves that are definitely necessary for a safe, a fully automatic operation uh, of a DRA plant while using uh, hydrogen. Then we have the advantage that we use a high pressure in, in our plant, and this allows us to have smaller plants, but also thanks to the higher uh, pressure in our scheme, we can achieve lower electrical consumption compared to process scheme that use uh, lower pressure. 
here we summarize the, the benefit of using hydrogen, both in terms of energy consumption and in terms of uh, CO2 emissions. Here we, we can see in the first graph how uh, the total energy used in the reduction process goes from above 10 gigajoule per ton to a range of 8 gigajoule per ton. And you can also see how we can basically achieve zero carbon and CO2 emissions uh, by using increasing quantity of hydrogen. The, our solution are indeed not only on papers, but we're doing projects on that. The most important case is the hybrid plant that we um, we partner with uh, for the project in Lulia in Sweden. Uh, this plant uh, uh, is now in full operation. They are already operating with the uh, hydrogen, and we are extremely proud of this partnership uh, with the hybrid. The second project that we are executing is with the Salzgitter in Germany. Um, so they have a, a very uh, ambitious plan of transforming their carbon footprint. And we're starting with the demonstration plant that is uh, uh, currently under construction. Then um, last year, we signed a contract for the greenest uh, DRA plant in Russia for a capacity of 2.5 million tons per year. As well as we are, um, again, extremely proud of being the supplier of the first DRI plant in China for the HBIS group. This plant has the uh, peculiarity, the unique characteristic that the makeup gas will have a content of above 70% uh, hydrogen with emissions intensity of uh, uh, 0.25 tons of CO2 per ton of steel. We're also uh, implementing a pig iron plant in, in Ohio for Pacman for a capacity of 425,000 tons per year. And we are in the design phase for a plant in Canada uh, that use the OSBF technology and uh, with the peculiarity that we will also produce vanadium and titanium together with the pig iron. So we are very happy to partner with the leaders in the steel making industry. And uh, uh, we trust that our um, value proposition meets the request of the industry. I will be very glad to continue the discussion during the Q&A session and look forward to it. Thank you very much.